this is a uh, Cooper Union. This is where uh, Lincoln Douglas debates were held in New York City. Uh, they did it right in there. This is McSorley's Pub Ale House. Uh, legend has it that Lincoln, after the Lincoln Douglas debate, came here and had a couple of beers. So uh, there's a lot of history here. Uh, it doesn't say how many beers he had, what kind of beers, or if he got drunk. Good fries? Yeah, man, we make the best fries in our city. Yeah, do you still eat them after all this time? Uh, I don't eat fries. Never? Uh, Are you burnt out on them? What? Are you burnt out on them? No, I love, I love them. They're good fries. They're very well prepared, uh, you know, but uh, I don't eat fried foods. Oh. Because they uh, uh, saturated fats. I guess that works in your benefit, but, you know, it, well, I just, I, I, I eat them vicariously. I eat them through the people I watch with them all day. Well, I see hundreds of people enjoying them, so in a way, I eat like hundreds of batches of fries a day by watching them. Eat them all their different sauces, and the sides, and like, you know, idiosyncrasies. Did you gain weight watching the people eat? No, see, there's no way I don't gain any weight. Um, How much is 435. Yeah, so this is... The making of our egg cream. I think it's our egg cream. Yeah, I make them good too. They used to make them with eggs. They used to. Yeah. They don't need more of that. That's the salsa. Mm -hmm. That's the chocolate syrup. What kind of chocolate syrup do they use? That seems like really good stuff. Yeah, I think it's just like so good. It's not hurt you with something. We make proper egg creams here. They make the best ones here. Right? Yeah. What do you What do you do to make a? These. Chocolate. Yeah, chocolate. What kind of chocolate do you use? This chocolate. This chocolate? This chocolate, this vanilla, uh -huh. coffee, cherry, strawberry, nah, this milk, this yes. ginger water. That's it. This is your next door neighbor, huh? Yeah, this is next door to my place. Uh, you can get uh, comic books, magazines, uh, propaganda of uh, many different communist propaganda, Nazi propaganda, uh, left wing, right wing. Uh, strangely enough, no middle of the road. You can't get any middle of the road type literature. Huh. You can't get uh, Newsweek, for instance. But uh, I live here, uh, 57. 7th Street. This is where the Upchurch Estate is. Uh, it's in between 1st and 2nd Avenue. They want a Harley Davidson. The Harley Davidson uh, National Headquarters is just two streets over uh, on, uh, I think it's 4th Street. Anyway, this is, this is where the Upchurch Estate is in New York City. And uh, we should just go in and uh, I'll take you on a grand tour of it, shall we? All right, I, I live here at number 17. It's really posh. Take on a tour. Okay. This is the uh, reading room in here. It's uh, also the bathroom. Yes. And it's the standing area if you want to just stand and, you know, relax. This is the uh, living room and the games room. Right. Maybe. It's also uh, okay. it's 
It's also the family room. This is the entertainment center here. Let me just turn this off. Um, what, what, what's amazing right is you're paying so much for so little. <laughs> At least you've got a, uh, a, a toilet inside. Right? Yeah, but that's the nice thing is the toilet. Terrace? Terrace? Relax. With a view, sort of? Definitely a view. I mean, you can see some stuff out there. You can see uh, on any given night, you can see uh, burglaries and drunken uh, people. It's really fun to see them. You got a few photos? It's a photo there, yeah. 1996. It's changed a little since since this, of course. Let's get a shot uh, this side is, uh, of the hallway. <laughs> see this guy here? In, the, in this picture? That guy? He's no longer there. He had to go take a dump a uh, hundred and uh, two years ago. So he's not there anymore. That horse there, not there either. This guy, he's moved over there somewhere. Yeah, this is a uh, five eighty a month to live here, which uh, I get is, is really good in New York standards because you have to explain that you live in Manhattan, which yeah. is maybe the most highest priced very, place very to high live right in here. the world. You know, yeah. not necessarily this neighborhood, but this this particular part of the city. Yeah, because if, if you want to pay uh, under twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 a month, you're going to have to live with rats. And this, I have never been so overjoyed for something so mediocre as this apartment. I was, I was just, you know, dying to find out. I wrote letters to the uh, landlord saying, please let me live in this place. Mm -hmm. and, and look at it. I mean, it's... This is the ideal viewpoint of my space. You can see that I can actually practically touch both walls. I could suspend myself probably in the middle of the room if I really wanted to. That's how small it is. Okay, um, this is the offices of uh, Chris Rock's show. We're here at uh, 11.20 at night. This is Chris Rock here. I just don't know who he is. Uh, he's my boss. He's a very talented and a very funny person. And uh, this is where the show is made. So Do you refer to him as Chris or Mr. Rock? Uh, everybody refers to him as Chris. Ah. Yeah, he'd make fun of us if we called him Mr. Rock. <laughs> yeah. This is a uh, Chris Rock logo. We see it. This way is where everybody does the writing. Actually, we we have this whole floor, but this wing is where all the writing staff is. Do you share your office with somebody, or do you have your own office? Um, each writer shares an office. Actually, there's two of the writers have their own. Uh, three of the writers have their own. They're co-producers. Mm -hmm. They're like they help produce the show. But, uh, if you look down this way, uh, that's one half. This, this building actually mm -hmm. uh, was once the, uh, it housed the writers for the New Yorker magazine. So, uh, Calvin Trilling, uh, E.B. White, uh, let's see who else, um, 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 they, they had a name to escape me right now, but uh, all the, the great writers for the, uh, uh, the New Yorker all, you know, were in this office, on this floor, this very floor, they were. So, that's something that's really cool. Uh, this is the conference room. So I don't have a, well, we'll go look at it later, but this is where we do all, all our tabling. For the bits. Uh, this is my office. This, this is me. Tom Agnew had a picture. Um, he's a really funny stand-up. Uh, he had his picture on here. I put it up there, but then he took it off because he didn't like looking at himself. <laughs> but that's me, so they can tell us apart. Right. Uh, this is my office. Doesn't really look like you, Mike. Well, it's just my head. Yeah. I look funny enough. You look I'm... really chubby there, actually. Really? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't look like I think you. when you disembody uh, your head, uh -huh. it makes you look chubby. This is really cool, though. This is something I'm really... It's really a cool part of my job. Is that... Let me turn the lights on so you can see it. But... That's the Chrysler building. Can you get that on their uh, video tape? Yeah, yeah, I can totally get that. Yeah, and it's it's great. I mean, it's it's probably one of the best views of the Chrysler building that you can get. Completely unobstructed, and uh, during the daytime, it's just beautiful. And uh, it's just really, really cool. I, know I spend a lot of time looking out the window. It's part of my job. That is uh, Fifth Avenue down there. 
and this is 43rd Street. We spy on these people over here in, these, in this building to our right. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom has a pair of binoculars. These joke uh, ideas. Uh, I just try to, uh, try to put the stuff up on my bulletin board. Did you get a shot of the bulletin board? We can do a close up of the bulletin board. I just uh, try to keep, you know, this is the diagram of the brain here. Uh, it's part of the you know, the slapstick, that's a back brain thing. Parody and satire and the far more of midbrain. Notice uh, you have your low brow. That's pretty low down right here in the brow. And then above that is where the high brow part of comedy comes from. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, Did you learn that in school? Can you zoom in on this? Yeah. This is, I love this photo. It's, it's journalistically, uh, it's, it's, I think it's yeah. just a great, Piece of journalism. That's actually someone throwing a projectile vomit. And what I like is it, it's it's happening. It's just it's so much action. This guy has no idea what's going on. He's just like uh, he's trying to get out of the way. Maybe maybe he doesn't even know. Maybe he's going to throw up too. This guy he doesn't even know what's going on. He's just like watching helplessly. But that's just I love that. You know, notice uh, okay here's something. Can you zoom in on this left? Sure. This is a picture, a very famous picture of uh, New York. It's when they were building the uh, RCA building, mm -hmm. which is now the GE building, uh, Rockefeller Center. You know, this is them, all the workers having lunch. And it's high above New York. You know, we're talking about 50th floor or something. This is all them. Now, you can zoom in on this. This little one here. Notice the difference? Can you see it? Can you make it up? Not offhand. Zoom in a little forward. Zoom in on this guy here. Okay. You Notice he's a different, different guy. He's not in that original photo. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. That's me. I actually went back in time and uh, and had lunch with those guys and had somebody uh, take a photo. But uh, this is where I work. I roll in here about 10 o'clock in the morning and have a little oatmeal and then. I read four, four newspapers a day. I read New York Times, New York Post, uh, uh, New York Daily News, and USA Today. I see a Stan Lee thing. You read comic books. Yeah, I, comic books too. Just whatever. <laughs> just, you know, it's it's just topical by us. So. Yeah, it passes time away. Plus, I read a bunch of magazines too. But, yeah, and then we can watch TV too. This is a Grand Central Terminal. A lot of people call it Grand Central Station, but it's actually Grand Central Terminal. If you look at the ceiling, uh, the Carnegies built this uh, at the turn of the century for the equivalent of a billion dollars. It's actually about 80 million. But if you look up there, they've got the constellations. The constellations are, are up on the, on the roof there. Right. And after they built it, and they spent a lot of money, they discovered that the constellations are actually reversed. Somebody, like, had the blueprint backwards or something. So when you're looking at it, it's actually the opposite of the way it is. Yeah. And so they fretted about it for about a week, and they sent out a press release saying that, well, this is the view that God sees the constellations, because God's on the outside. He's looking at it from the other direction. Kind of a cool cover story. So what did they redo here? Uh, they refurbished the entire thing. Um, all of this looks like marble. It's actually only an inch thick. It's not solid marble. But uh, they refurbished the entire thing, top to bottom. I mean, it's really beautiful if you see it. Um, and when I first got here, this whole place was covered with scaffolding. Um, it's, it's just it's a, a wonder, one of the wonders of the world. This is the Oyster Bar restaurant. So this is the only original tenant that's still here. It's been here for uh, almost uh, 100 years. Anyway, what's interesting is they have this interlocking tile, and the shape is such that it conducts sound very well. You'll notice it's kind of a weird echo. Okay, my voice is echoing. Now, this is the interesting part. Hey, Doug, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. It's amazing. See? You can't hear me right now because it doesn't work as well. But no, it's not as clear, but it's. 
talk here. I mean, I can hear you like you're right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. Very fun. We missed our train. Was that our train, really? this to and from work. This very line.